The treatment of amyloidosis goes along two different lines. One is treatment of the underlying plasma cell dyscrasia, which is the uh, myeloma-like component of amyloidosis, which is what we've been targeting for many years. We use botezomib, which is our traditional first-line treatment, and combining botezomib with other drugs is really where things are going forward. Uh, there have been some recent data using pomalidomide in patients with relapsed refractory amyloidosis. This appears to be much better tolerated than other immunomodulatory agents with very good and very rapid responses. The agent which is uh, promising to change the landscape is the monoclonal antibody daratumumab. There has been some recent data which was published uh, in blood a couple of months ago showing that patients who have relapsed after many lines of treatment with daratumumab, the responses are very high in up to 60 to 70 percent of patients, and these responses can also result in cardiac responses. Our French colleagues have just done a phase two clinical trial, and I showed a slide which they shared with me, showing that even with single agent daratumumab, at end of one month, nearly 60 percent patients will achieve a 90 percent or greater reduction in their monoclonal light chains. This is fairly dramatic and quite different from what we see in multiple myeloma, where the responses to single agent daratumumab in the relapsed refractory setting are in the order of 30 or 40 percent. In amyloid, they seem to be in the order of 60 or 70 percent. Uh, Ixazomib is the oral proteasome inhibitor, and their phase one trial has been completed, and the phase three trial is ongoing. And it's another very promising agent in amyloidosis. The tolerance in the phase one trial was very good, and the responses looked much better. We know that the proteasome inhibitors in amyloid are very sensitive, uh, sorry, plasma cells in amyloid are very sensitive to proteasome inhibition, and therefore uh, Ixazomib uh, promises to be another very good agent in amyloidosis. So I think we have got a number of new agents that, some of the old agents in myeloma, so to say, which are new for amyloid, and some of the relatively new agents which uh, promise uh, to be relatively less toxic and offer rapid responses in anti-amyloid therapy. Moving on to the uh, actual drugs which clear amyloid deposits, uh, we've got these three monoclonal antibodies. We've got one which we are studying in London, which is currently being studied by GSK, Glaxo, which is an antibody to SAP. In the phase one clinical trial, when this antibody was given along with a drug called CPHPC, we were able to show that the amyloid from the liver cleared literally within six weeks of giving this drug. This was the most dramatic result in amyloid clearance that certainly I've ever seen. And we hope that this can be translated into um, amyloid clearance for the heart and the kidneys, which are really the two organs which cause major morbidity and mortality. The phase one data from the NEO001 antibody made by Prathena also looks interesting. And two nicely conducted phase three trials have completed. These are randomized double-blind placebo control trials. One of them will hopefully read out sometime next year and the other one maybe the year after. Uh, and the third antibody is the KEL101 antibody, which is also an antibody developed uh, against light chain amyloidosis. And the phase one data with this also looks very interesting. And we hope that the phase two studies with this will start soon. So I think all three antibodies are interesting in their own way. The GSK antibody appears to be very rapidly acting. The Prothena antibody certainly shows progressive responses uh, and appears to be relatively non-toxic. And the KEL101 also appears to show very rapid responses. So I think on an amyloid treatment front, uh, we've got three very promising drugs uh, and we look forward to the results of those trials.